Hey, did you know if you don't prep your wall be right before you put drywall mud on it, it could fail. I'm going to tell you the right way to prep it and why it might fail right after this. All right, I've got this question a lot in the comments, so I decided to do a video about it because I think a lot of you don't really know what is the right way to prep a wall before you put mud over it. And it varies with what you're doing. So let me give you some examples. I'll tell you what to do and why. Hey, you know one of the things I hate to do around the house? That's vacuuming and mopping floors. Well, I found a really good way to cut that down a lot. We're sponsored today by Yeedy Vacuums. This is a robot vacuum. I've been using it for a while and I love it. These things are pretty amazing technology. They got all kinds of sensors built in. This thing even has this little camera here that looks like it's just looking up, but it actually maps out your whole house. It'll draw out the shape of your rooms and everything. You can tell this thing to go do one room at a time, an area at a time. You can put no-go zones. You can change the map and adapt it as you need, but the best thing is this thing does a great job that it will fill this thing up every time it vacuums our little thousand square foot uh, rental house. Uh, it's got a lot of cool features too, like it also will mop. This is a water tank. You put a mopping pad on the bottom here, it knows it. It's got sensors that tell you. So it'll mop for you. It's got bumpers here. It's got sensors everywhere and it just gets the job done really well. This thing even knows when it's doing hardwood floors, it's on a low power. When it hits your carpet, it speeds up the vacuum so it picks up better. So if you wanna check this out, I'll put a link in the description down below and I thank these guys for sponsoring us on this video. So number one, as always, it's best to uh, put mud over a clean sound wall. Uh, generally, moisture is not a great idea, but if the wall is slightly damp, you can usually mud over it. If it's very damp, don't do it. You want to get it fairly dry, but minor moisture is okay. Dust, you want to minimize the dust. If you've sanded and you've got a lot of dust or that wall is just dusty for some reason, clean it first. Uh, if you've been working on it and it's just light sanding dust, usually that will melt into your mud, but there is a limit to that. You don't want to try and just go right over it. Often, if you try and spread mud over a dusty wall, it will curl off and just fall off the wall. Some of it will. That's kind of proof that it's not a good idea. So clean wall, clean of dust, minimal dust, and minimal moisture. You also don't want contaminants on it. Like if there's any thing like grease, sometimes we've had cases where the wall got sprayed with some chain lube off for our bazooka. You got to treat that, you got to seal it, get rid of that, or it'll come right through and it can cause adhesion problems. So clean and sound. So if you've got a painted wall, you may want to clean it first. You don't know for sure what's on that wall. There could be light greasy splatter on it, dust, uh, all kinds of contaminants. So it's generally best if you just wipe down the wall before you start mudding over it. I've always used a product called Crud Cutter, and I'll show you a picture of it here, and I'll try and put a link in the description down below. It's a great product because it's non-toxic, non-flammable, biodegradable. It's a safe product, but it works like mad. It's really good at cutting grease. So I just put a little bit in some water, spray it, or a rag, wipe a wall down, let it dry, and you're good to go. But if it's painted, there's another step you need to do. If you're doing a repair, you often are doing it right over a painted wall. And the glossier it is, the less your mud wants to stick. So how do you combat that? Well, you, you could put a bonding primer over the whole area that you're gonna put mud on. That can help, but I still recommend my first step either way, and that is to sand it. I've done a lot of uh, automotive painting. There's a picture of my hot rod right here. I painted that.
one of the tricks to getting automotive paint to stick to smooth surfaces is a little bit of sanding scratches. You got to be careful with it. It can't be too coarse or it comes right through a shiny finish like a paint job. But if you tried to paint over super slick surface, it won't stick. And that's because it needs what we call tooth. And that is those sanding scratches. The paint can literally hang on to those sanding scratches where if it's smooth, it just doesn't have anything to bite onto and you can get delamination and failures. Could even get cracking from improper uh, prep of your surface. So what I do is I suggest you sand it with like 80 grit or even 60 grit. You want some good hefty scratches in there. Sand it until you've got maybe 50% of it scratched up. I don't know an exact amount. I just sand it a little bit till I know it's scratched up pretty good. And then clean that dust off. Now it'll stick to that painted surface. And remember the glossier it is, the more you want to sand it because things just don't like to stick to glossy. It'll stick to a flat paint better than it will a glossy. Hey, you know, one of the secrets to doing quality work when you're, you're doing your own drywall is quality tools. Now that's why I actually reached out to Level 5 last year and asked them for support of our channel and they gladly agreed. They saw the kind of content that I'm putting out and they realized it fits in with the quality of their tools. So I want to let you guys know that I am an affiliate for Level 5. They're not paying me to say anything here. But if you decide to purchase anything, I do make about 5% on it. But get this, I'm going to be able to give you 10% off as an affiliate. You can't get that on Amazon. Now they have some really cool tools. They got everything from your basic hand tools. You can see mine have definitely been used. They're a little bit dirty right now, but not bad. These are stainless. They're not going to rust. They got all kinds of skim coating blades, including this. I believe it's a 30 inch model all the way up through a full set of taping tools. So if you guys need any of this, I recommend them. I'll put a link down below to my website. That's where all my links are these days. Go to that KiltedGuy.com and you'll find the links to all this stuff and the discount code. And thanks for supporting our channel by supporting our, our sponsors. One more prep uh, area. Uh, this, all these prep ideas apply to drywall, whether it's new or painted. If it's new drywall, you generally don't have to do anything unless you got the dust on it or any other contaminants. But it's those existing surfaces, you're skim coating them, you're repairing, you got to do the sanding and the cleaning, deglossing basically, and uh, you want to make sure it's clean of contaminants. But that also applies to paneling. I get asked this all the time, can I put mud over paneling? Well, yes, you can, but if that paneling is floppy at all, it's not really sound, it could very well crack your mud. It really needs to be solid and something that's not gonna flex easy because mud, drywall mud doesn't like to flex very much at all, so it'll crack. But if it's sound enough, you basically do the same thing. You clean it, sand it, clean it again, then you can mud over it. But it's usually a good idea on something like primer to do a bonding primer. And that's also because it's often dark paneling and you want to seal that. So a seal sealing primer like maybe Zinzer Bullseye 123, it's a pretty good one. And that will seal that dark color in. And sometimes there's wood stain in there because it doesn't have a top coat on it. You want to seal that too so it doesn't try and bleed through your mud and cause adhesion problems. Hey, if you want to increase your learning power a thousand percent, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up. After you subscribe, look for that bell, click the bell, and you'll get notified of all the videos. Hey, that's a little tip for you. I hope that helps you out. And if you like that, here's another video that'll help you out. Click that one right now, and I'll see you on that next video. Take care, everybody.